Hello everyone, I am JJ Bartell, and I am a storyteller, a scientist, and historian. I do a lot of work with plants, and it's very awesome, and I want to start a tradition on this YouTube channel. And so, for those of you who don't know, I am obviously a writer. I write a whole host of different things. I mean, just some of the work that I'm kind of currently working in right now, I'm just showing on screen here. So there's a few things that I want to like actually point out with all of this is that he who does not write uh, is ashamed to call himself a writer. Whee! The mic moves. Okay, but here's the thing. If you never write anything and you call yourself a writer, you have a problem. And it's called you and not writing. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to talk about some of the monthly progress that I've been making on my actual website, uh, www.jjbartel.com. That's jjbartel.com. Uh, I actually use that as a site to host these monthly updates. This is what I'm thinking. I would like to share every month what I'm doing, and it would be very cool for me to like be at the end of the year and be like, this is where I started, and this is where I've ended, and do all sorts of cool stuff. So in some sense, this is a journal, vlog, progress update of what I'm doing with my life, especially when it comes to the world of writing. Our first uh, section is going to be is going to be fiction, and it's going to be larger work. Then we're going to move into fiction, smaller works, and then we're going to go into nonfiction book-sized works, and then we're going to go into non-fiction, uh, smaller works. So we're going to split it up into four main sections, and we're just going to run by it from there. So, Suol Nua, our village of New Hope, this is like uh, Gaelic, this is, you know, one of the Irish languages, um, and the idea is that this is our village of New Hope. Now, this is one of the first fiction books that I have written that I am in the process of getting published. But I have decided after, I mean, just look at this for a second. Look at all them chapters, even in a little epilogue here. And so all these different chapters, and it's, um, I think to tell this story the best, A, I think I need to add a lot more, I think I need to add at least two or three different chapters in the very beginning. So that's one of going to be one of the things I'm going to want to do. Then I'm also going to want to... After that, I kind of want to flesh out a few more points in some of these chapters, and then I'm going to take it to a beta reader, and I'm going to just see kind of what they're going to tell me. You can actually pay people to be beta readers on places like Fiverr, and that just blows my mind, like actual beta readers on Fiverr. And to just kind of give you an idea, just so that you know that I didn't just fill out all this, just look at this for a second. Whee! So anyways, a giant mess of things. Anyways, hopefully the frame rate didn't die for you all. Uh, the next thing I want to talk on is the Cosmic Gardener. Now, the Cosmic Gardener is a little bit of a, a unique situation because on the one hand, very, very long. Think like One Piece. Uh, think, you know, for like one piece of manga think like uh, episodic like spongebob squarepants the idea is that it's very episodic uh some of the episodes will feed on from each other but as a general rule this is content that is so on the one hand this is very much so a smaller content because you only write like four or five chapters at a time but the idea is that you plan out your story and then okay how does this fit into the narrative? How do I want to take this character to the next level? It's kind of like Dragon Ball Z in that sense, where every time you do go into it. And so that's kind of where I'm at with this guy. Uh, if you want to read a little bit of what I'm doing with this guy, uh, you can all you can always go to the website, uh, check that out. Just type in Cosmic Gardener in the search down below and you'll be good. Now, Descending White Death Mountain. Uh, ignore the Grammarly suggestions here. For some reason, it's glitching out on this page. This is a horror story, and it's also, um, it's mild horror, mild suspense. It's not super death gore. I mean, we're talking about a 12-year-old girl. 
uh, trying to descend a frozen mountain, trying to beat a blizzard, and kind of suffering from it. She's got to face all sorts of wilderness and other issues. Like, to kind of give you an idea, it's only 28 pages, so it's a shorter story. It's under 50. And so this would be very interesting to actually publish in, in the near future. And that's part of the reason why I think it's so exciting to do a video version of this for all my works, because I'm at a point where a lot of these are publishable now or very close to publishing. This is one of them. It'll be cool. Uh, we Farm the Mammoths in Space is also another kind of like a horror, a sci-fi-ish, but it's a very nice, uh, different father-son bonding kind of, a little bit of a Jurassic feel to it, a Jurassic Park feel, so that's kind of interesting, but there's a lot of other things I want to throw in there, which is cool. Now, this is the Botanist Field Guide for Genesis. Now we're into the nonfiction work that I do, and that's pretty cool. Now the reason why I bring this up is because I sent it off to a publisher, and sometime in, in February, or very early March, I should hear back from him, and I might get this guy published, and it's so cool! Uh, and if it goes well, I might even be able to like do a botanist field guide for Exodus. And so the idea is that between these two books, I talk about the different mentions of plants in the Bible, specifically in this part of the book. And so there's a lot of mentions of the flora and the fauna, and there's all sorts of different in there. And so if you understand the plants more, if you understand the plants better, it can actually change how you understand that as like a scripture. And considering that Genesis is important for like three religions, uh... Christians, Jews, as well as Muslims, uh, there's a lot of people who would actually be interested in buying this kind of a book. And plus, there's lots of gardeners out there that are very theoretical, theological, so, I mean, it has widespread, so I think I got a chance. If it goes well, I might even be able to do an Exodus version, maybe go through the entire Bible. <laughs> uh, but some books don't have a whole lot of plant mentions, so I can't really do much with it. But... On to my other big plant book, the Mango Encyclopedia. Now, just to kind of highlight for this, I cover mangoes, anything and everything of mangoes, from the very beginning of time to the very end of, like, our time as we know it, which is the year 2000. Now, I stop at the year 2000 for thematic reasons as well as intentional reasons. This is a mango encyclopedia, anything and everything about mangoes. And when I had my first mango, I was about, you know, I was a small child, preteen, and it was the year 2000. And so in some sense, the book is a celebration of all of the achievements and victories and advancements that people have gone through to get to the point where somebody in South Dakota could actually munch on a mango halfway across the world from where it originated, and it's actually not a weird thing. So I really wanted to celebrate it, so here we go, Mango Encyclopedia. Now this is much smaller work from this point onward. This is only 34 pages. This is a treatise on yeeting the stupid and getting both smart and wise. I enjoy writing systems of clarity and assistance that you can actually go in to read and then it can help make your life better. I found these helpful and useful when I was growing up, so I kind of like writing my own. And so what this is, is a treatise on yeeting the stupid, and so this is like, how do you learn? How can you learn faster? And here are some things you can do to double check and see if you're learning as fast and as wondrous as you should be. Because in reality, most people do things that shoot themselves in the foot, and that's why it takes longer and harder to actually know things. So. That's a real issue. Now this giant mouthful is basically a look back at my high school years and saying to myself, was that really worth it? And the answer is no. I should have been homeschooled. Uh, but at the same time, there is an aspect of every subject that is meaningful, useful, relevant, and valuable that if we learned it and we mastered it, uh, we would actually find some meaningful benefits. And most people are so obsessed with trying to get a good grade or to just pass the class or memorize and forget or 
or just, you know, we are, we're left with this situation of asking ourselves, why? Like, what's the practicality of this math problem? What's the practicality of this art project? What's the practicality of blah, 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 blah? And so what this is, is an explanation of saying, look, buddy, your teacher may not know this, but there is a practical reason as to why you should learn these things. Here are some basic guidances and outlines as to why this matters. And this is also going to be explorative as to the nature of how you can use these in your private life, in your public life, to make yourself a better person so that you can do more cool things with it. Oh, sorry. Alrighty then. And the last kind of thing I want to cover is the nature versus nurture versus the noble. And so there's this great debate on nature versus nurture. And this might be a very large book. This might be a very small guy. I don't know. I'm just kind of toying around with the idea. I got a few other crazy ones like the dragons of human, of human biology. I kind of want to talk about um, like why we create different types of uh, varieties. I do also want to get into some poetry or whatnot, but in some sense, this is a statement of, I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. And I do know that I wanna try to do a lot of interesting things. I've been focusing a lot on nonfiction recently, so I wanna drift back to fiction writing because in my mind, fiction and nonfiction aren't as clear-cut as we like to say they are. You see, here's the thing, is that the best fiction tales contain some kind of truth to them. And the best nonfiction that you will ever read usually contains an interesting story. And so when you look at like scientific papers or you look at uh, progress reports or sheets or other nonfiction pieces of work that's very interesting, very captivating, uh, they tend to tell a story and they tend to tell a cohesive story from beginning to end. And the stuff that is supposedly false and fake and filled with, you know, things that aren't true, like dragons and princesses and, and you know, she's not in another castle and she actually does want to be with you. You know, those kinds of things that we think of as fantasy or like science fiction with lasers and rail guns and, you know, maybe even dystopian futures or something. All of that tends to work the best when it tells some kind of truth. That man has some evil in him and some good in him. And which one you choose to act on truly separates you from another. And there's also things like creed and culture do matter. And there's all sorts of other interesting things that I could talk about that I could get into. But I just wanted to have this quick, nice, easy to understand update as to what I'm doing. Uh, and I hope that you guys will join me again next month when I have another one. But there will be other videos on the channel that will be coming in much sooner. So if you liked my uh, exploration on how to polish and perfect uh, my first fiction book, if you liked the idea of the episodic cosmic gardener, if you liked hearing about a horror suspense natural fantasy sci-fi ish kind of thing uh getting ready to be published if you enjoyed hearing about a shall we say a ice age-esque jurassic park little mini adventure if you liked hearing about uh, religious analysis of plants and future religious analysis of plants if you enjoyed hearing about an encyclopedia for a fruit if you enjoyed hearing about how a how you could learn to learn how you could figure out how to learn better, if you enjoyed uh, listening to how you could master the school subjects as you were taught them, and you also enjoyed hearing about new future possible updates, please subscribe so that you can have all sorts of um, new adventures in the future.